Hello. The goal of this video will be to write a linear equation in standard form given one of two things, the coordinates of two points on the line, or one point on the line and the slope. This is for section 10.2 uh, about point slope and standard form. So from our notes, this is the new equations we've learned for the equation of line. M here is our slope. Y, uh, y1 and x1 are the y and x coordinates of our given point. Together, these make the equation of a line. So let's apply this uh, equation in a couple of examples. Here, uh, if we want to, just like what we did with slope from earlier, we can label our first points, and then it becomes a matter of substituting things in. Our equations have x and y in them. Our y value here is 5 equals, they tell us what our slope is, 1 fourth x take away my x1, like that. Okay, So we've written a point slope form given a point, specifically that was 3 and 5, and the slope of 1 fourth. Do a couple more examples. Label it here. Okay, y take away here, same old 5 equals negative 3 halves x, x take away negative 2, and this time around we can do a little bit more simplifying. We can rewrite the right hand side to look like this x plus 2. Either of these two answers would be right here. You can do 1d, you can do 1c on your own. We have y take away, let's see, 5 equals negative 3x minus 0. Okay, that's acceptable. Or you can simplify the right hand side a little bit more, negative 3 times x. That also counts as point slope form. This one you can do on your own. I hope you see the pattern that's present. Then the part that becomes a little bit harder, and as I discussed in class reviewing uh, standard form, okay, specifically this is for lines, because for other kinds of equations there are standard forms for them, like the standard form for an exponential, standard form for a quadratic, or other kinds of polynomials. In this case we just focus on the line. In general it looks like this. I guess I should highlight this. Okay. This stuff is all important, standard form for lines. It looks like ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are all whole numbers. So I think it was useful to see a couple of examples and non-examples. On the left-hand side, all these things count as standard form. You see that they have whole numbers out in front of um, their variables. Okay, a, b, and c are all whole numbers. It's ordered x then y, and then you have your constant with the numbers that stand by themselves on the other side, here and here. They could be positive, they could be negative. You could swap the order, and that's okay. Here still your ax plus by equals c. And this one could be a little bit surprising. It also ends up being standard form. You have your b value being um, 0. You still have ax plus by equals c. c value is 4, a value is 2, your b value happens to be 0. On the right hand side, let's see why each of these are not standard form. Uh, over here, you can see you can't have fractions, can't have decimals as those multipliers. This one uh, is not standard form because y is on the wrong side, or likewise, you could say these two things are on the wrong side. You could have combined like terms here, okay? And then this one, uh, y comes before x. You could do some rearranging here to get this one to be standard form. The same goes for actually all of these. You could multiply this one by 10. You could rearrange this equation. You could simplify and rearrange this equation to make them all standard form. And so part of that challenge is our next problem type. Here we have an equation that's written in point-slope form, and we have to change it into standard form. We want it to look like 
ax plus by equals c. This is some more algebra heavy steps. Okay, some more algebra heavy problems. So from here to here, your first step is to multiply both sides by the common denominator. Multiply both sides by denominator in these equations. We want to make the fractions go away. Whole numbers are much easier to deal with. So in this case, we multiply everything by 2. And I'll be excessive in the work that I show. Okay, 2, and then you have 3 halves, x plus 1, like that. The important part here, maybe I'll highlight it, is this 2 that happens. From there, we can begin to foil out our distributive property, the left-hand side. 2 times negative 3 halves gives us negative 3 times x plus 1. You can keep simplifying. I'll write it on this side. So we're left with 2y minus 12 equals negative 3 x minus 3. Watch the distributive property here. Okay, looks like this. Don't forget that negative sign. From there, we, let's see, y is on the right side. This thing is not on the right side. I guess I'll circle this x, okay? Not on the right side. This one is good. So I'm thinking about where I want each uh, term to be. I want my x's and y's over here and all my numbers over here. It gives me kind of a guide on, or I'm asking myself, okay, are you in the right spot? Are you in the right spot? Are you in the right spot? What about you? Now I can do some rearranging. Maybe I'll add 12 to move 12 over here. So now I'm left with 2y is made 0 equals negative 3x. And this part gives us plus 9. Almost there. We we'll think about, okay, now this time around, this is good. 9's on the right side, 2y's on the correct side. Now we got to deal with this minus 3. So let's add 3x to both sides. Here, it's not a matter of combining like terms. You can just write them left to right, like so. You can't combine them. And now we're done. This is the standard form version of this equation. Here's another example. y plus 1 equals 1 half, negative 1 half times x plus 4. So just like from before, our first step is to multiply by that denominator. Make it go away. So in this case, our denominator here was 2. We have 2y plus 2 equaling negative 1 times x plus 4. Keep simplifying. 2y plus 2 equals negative x plus 4. We'll think about who is on the correct side. This one's good. This one's good. But we need to swap these two. So. Uh, we must do so algebraically, so maybe we'll take away 2 from both sides, like so. This makes 0. We're left with 2y equals negative x plus 2. Now we'll move this x term over. So we're left with x plus 2y, this made 0, equaling 2. And we're done. We've converted yet another equation. This is a point-slope form into standard form. Here are a couple uh, more complicated examples, building on what we worked with last time on section 10.1 about slope. We have to calculate the slope, then we have to put that into point-slope form, and lastly, we do it like we did above, turn that point-slope form into standard form. So, yeah bunch more steps, so I left myself plenty of space to do so. 
Okay, given these two points, let's write standard form for it. So first we must calculate slope. Okay, number one, line slope. I'm labeling my x values and y values. We're using m equals y2, y1, x2, x1, 5 minus 2 divided by 5 minus negative 1. We have a slope here of 3 divided by 5 plus 1. Oh. We have a six at the bottom, gives us one half. Step two, put into point slope form. That's the only equation of a line we know as of right now that looks like y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Keep the same labeling we did for the slope, y make more work for ourselves, y take away 2 equals 1 half times x take away negative 1. And we can simplify this a little bit more. We can write that as y take away 2, our slope here is 1 half, x plus 1. 3, turn into standard form. I guess the most algebra heavy step, okay? So just like from the earlier problems, uh, let's copy this thing, okay? Paste it here. This is what I'm working with. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by two y is 2, that's the denominator. 1 half x plus 1, okay. I'm probably going to run out of space. 2y minus 4, that's the distributive property. This side, we're just left with x plus 1, okay. Why is that? Well, 2 times 1 half just gives you 1. We can begin our rearranging. I need to go make some more space out of the way. Okay, looking at who's on the correct side, 2y is okay, with 1's okay, we have to deal with the other terms. 2y minus 4 equals x plus 1. Okay, let's deal with this constant, this number 4, that makes 0, left with 2y equals x plus 5. Take away x from both sides, that made 0. So just so I save some space, we have now our standard form, negative x plus 2y equals 5. A lot of work for these problems. Okay, three steps though. Find slope, put into point slope form, then turn point slope into standard form. I guess you should see some patterns in the conversion from point slope into standard form. Here is, let's see which one looks harder. Let's do 3c. Uh, let's do one with more negatives. Jump down to this example 3d. Uh, if you want more practice, I guess I can look up the answers for you here for these two problems. Okay. So if you want to do 3b on your own, you should get an answer of 3x plus 5y equaling 23. If you want to do 3c on your own, you should get 3x plus, oops, uh, no, minus, minus 2y equaling 5. All right, and in this last example, 3d that I will do, we should get an equation that looks like 3x plus 7y equals 29. All right, let's go. Here's x1, y1, 
x2, y2. Why is that? Because we want to find slope. Write out that slope formula. Point where my hand is numb from writing it so many times, okay? 2, take away 5, divided by 5, take away negative 2. Negative 3 is on top, gives us 5 plus 2 on the bottom. We do have a not as nice fraction, okay? We have a slope of negative 3 sevenths. Number 2, put into y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. That's point slope form. y take away 5 equals m times x. Oops, I know what my slope is. Negative, negative 3 sevenths x take away negative 2. Okay, and then step 3, turn into standard form. So I'll simplify my answer from step 2. Negative 3 over 7 x plus 2. Okay. And in this case, we have a little bit different denominator. We want to times 7 over here times 7. So that looks like 7 y minus 5 equaling 7 times all this stuff, negative 3 sevenths, x plus 2, 7y minus 35, make a bit larger numbers, 7 times th negative 3 sevenths gives us just the uh, numerator, oops, x plus 2, One more step of distributive property on the right hand side, negative 3x minus 6. Okay, we think about moving things. You notice I always deal with this number. Okay, moving from left to right, this makes 0. 7y equals 3x plus 29. And then we move this x term to the proper side. This makes 0. So we have 3x plus 7y equals 29. Should match what I said would be the answer. Okay, with a bunch of algebra. Zoom out. So all those steps, we found the standard form equation. For these two points, we've gotten the equation of a line. And look, those two equations do match. That's all. See you next time.